So from the title of the talk, you can guess uh, I'm going to not talk only about your spatial data, but about the combination of architectural and engineering data as well. Um, and if there is one sentence that I can explain what Speckle is, because it's a lot of, of different things, it would be the data hub for architecture, engineering, and construction. And even that one sentence is not generic enough, so I had to add a star over there uh, to show that it's also open for any kind of related data in 1D, 2D, or 3D. Um, by the way, my name is Katerina, I'm a software engineer uh, at Speckle, working specifically with the GIS data. Uh, and uh, to briefly introduce um, the history of Speckle, it was born from the PhD uh, research of Dimitri uh, in 2015, and it was born out of the frustration of how inefficient the uh, architectural industry is technology-wise. Uh, it was an open source project, it grown organically over years. Um, I myself have discovered it uh, somewhere between 2015 and 2016 when I was trying to connect software between Unity and Grasshopper and that was literally the only piece of code I can find that was open source. Uh, and uh, in a couple uh, years later it got adopted by larger AC companies and um, in the middle of pandemic the two founders had a great idea to start a company out of it and here we are today. Um, we are um, almost 30 people right now, and if, again, there is one sentence to describe what is our mission, is to make the AEC better, and I will describe in which ways we are trying to make it better. Uh, I will not go as deep uh, to the history as the previous speaker. Um, I'll go just 50 years back uh, and uh, show that, uh, in fact, uh, also the architectural industry has moved to, from the manual labor and paper-based files and documents to the digital ones, the underlying uh, frictions uh, of the fragmented and disconnected formats is still there. And although um, in the geospatial data there might be um, more data standards, in AEC there are also data standards, but AEC is a design process, so most of the data is work in progress and it's harder to adjust to the standards while you are in, in the design process, basically. Uh, the AEC tech uh, is uh, ages behind, not in the way of what capabilities is providing us, but in the way of what workflow it opens to the users. Uh, it's still a very dependent on the fragmented, uh, fragment, fragmented data. So we have different file formats, we have engineering software that have their own formats, we have architectural software, we have GIS software, uh, and rarely your uh, teammate or a person from another company, uh, they might not even be able to open your file. Uh, then we have the vendor login, you have uh, the ArcGIS project file, and you won't be able to open it until you purchase the license. And all of this uh, together comes down to the lack of productivity and wasting time on coordinating things instead of actually doing useful work. Um, so the three ways we're trying to make AC better is to connect people, projects, and software into the meaningful and seamless workflows. Uh, we are also bringing um, the collaboration interface uh, through, the, uh, web, um, through the web app. Uh, which uh, um, pulls the data directly from the database where you uploaded your data and is a central place where you can explore the data, manage and collaborate with others. And Automate uh, is a, a recent addition where basically you can run a small repetitive task in an automated way on your data. And underlying thing under all of it is a control that you are uh, in full control of your data. You can not necessarily rely on the public speckle server, you can host your own. Uh, you can uh, set up all the permits and access policies that you need. Uh, you're flexible to deploy it in any cloud provider in any region and deploy any custom tools and apps on the top of it. Um, the principle of how Speckle works um, uh, on the back is taking the data from the host software, whether it's architecture, engineering, uh, I don't know, Microsoft Excel or any other app, convert it into, into the data uh, which is written in a very simple, again, open format, reminding the JSON format, uh, and uploading it to the cloud, where once you publish it, you can access it uh, in any other host software. You can pull it back there, you can pull it to your Python script and run some um, publishing dashboards, or you can uh, access it through the web app. And you also can access the versioning system uh, of all the model, basically following the GitHub principle, but for 3D models. Um, so, uh, the principles of connecting um, the data through different workflows. 
uh, I have tried to pull some of the more geospatial uh, related examples. These uh, are the tutorials we have on our website, speckle.systems, and you can find um, kind of most common or most interesting workflows over there, but it's not limited to these workflows. You can implement uh, your own. And I will show you a couple examples of how to connect from software A to software B. We have an architect or designer working with Rhino software and creating some building mass model, sending it to Speckle, and immediately the engineer working in Revit can attach some structural properties, materials, and other attributes to the data. Once the designer has any changes, it can update their model, and the structural engineer will immediately receive the updates and have the new model with already attached structural properties. Now, another example uh, is when you don't need to pull the data to the other host application, but instead you would like to get some live insights from your data. And whenever a stage of completion your project is, you can always access that data from the, uh, from the server and either run your own dashboard or, um, again, use Speckle Connector for something like Power BI and visualize the live insights from there. Uh, and uh, basically everything I have just mentioned and a couple more examples of how this data exchange and the data exchanges can be more meaningful uh, is, for example, work with between the engineer and uh, um, the rendering person who works in Blender. Then you can uh, do it in a much quicker way. Uh, or the designer and the structural engineer running through different iterations and getting instant feedback or where analysis have failed and what needs to be changed without, again, sending the files and asking, can you please check. Um, you can also uh, extract uh, the GIS data from QGIS in a very quick way, uh, having just a simple, basically not doing anything, just opening the QGIS and pulling the base layers with a digital elevation model and Google satellite or any other raster and extrude it into 3D. You can also put your uh, OpenStreetMap buildings or any other models which are simple polygons, then choose the attributes uh, that you want to use for the height of the buildings and instrue them in 3D. Basically what a QGIS 3D viewer already does, but, that they, uh, but this is actual geometry that can be usable by anyone else. And you can use that data to pull it into another design and engineering apps that have, for example, any uh, information about uh, geographical location and Revit software usually has a setting where you specify your geographic location and then you can either write your script or adjust your GIS data to pull the data in a specific location and support your model in the other software. Um, the, the ways of collaboration. Uh, so we have this nice web app with uh, management and permissions and uh, uh, handling all, all the bureaucratic things but also uh, the, the, the most interesting part of it is the web viewer. And the web viewer um, does not only allow you to explore the data yourself, you can also um, send a link to your partner, uh, the, and the person will open the link. Uh, you will see each other presence in that model, basically, through the small uh, tags. You can click on the other person tag, and you will be following uh, the exact actions and the camera movements that the other person is doing. You can um, make the sections, you can filter the data, or you can pinpoint specifically what you want. You can leave the comments on the model, you can send attachments to it, uh, and so on. Uh, you can also combine different models uh, where you have one project uh, and um, both architect uh, and master planner and engineer are working on it and they're sending their data as different models. You can still use the viewer to combine those different models, uh, overlay them into uh, the same, let's say, coordinate system and uh, uh, hide uh, uh, or show whatever elements you need at that moment. In this example, I added uh, some network analysis that you can run, again, from another software and upload it to the same project. Um, except for just uh, exploration of the data, uh, in, uh, the way the speckle data is structured allows to easily identify what properties each of the data or each of the elements have, uh, also see whether it's a discrete values or continuous values, and um, uh, relatively to that, uh, allow you to filter data by those custom properties. And in this case, um, the custom property was uh, temperature, and I have just filtered the Northern American um, data uh, to see what regions are more chill in that specific time. Um, and uh, you can also compare the versions, because 
uh, once you are sending the same model over and over again from the software, um, the speckle is tracking what object have remained the same, has been deleted, uh, changed or added, and this is an easy way to make the visual diff of, 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 your, of your data. Um, and the automate, which is again the latest edition, it's currently in the open beta stage, so you can try it out. Uh, it's a CI CD continuous integration continuous delivery principle applied to architecture. Uh, so the way we deploy the software once we push the tag on GitHub and um, build the installer and deploy it uh, somewhere, uh, same principle can be applied to architecture. Once you upload your model, you can run the trigger to run a specific analysis on the top of it, uh, build you a specific report and uh, notify you in the specific app. Uh, and the example of it is to uh, basically automate a small or annoying rep repetitive tasks uh, and run it, for example, on every model change once you need to make sure that whatever you have edited in a structural software is still compliant with all the regulations. Um, there is plenty of opportunities here. <coughs> you can run your custom functions in the, your language of preference. You can the, uh, see it on the left the example with a function that's running computational fluid dynamic uh, simulation uh, on the building mass in models of the specific uh, district. Uh, and on the right side, you see the automation function that's, run, uh, that's running the compliance check on the construction model uh, and uh, replacing you the, um, the work of, I don't know, hours of work of the engineers. Um, and the control part of it, again, as I mentioned, the speckle servers are provider agnostic and location agnostic. You can host it by yourself, you can host it with us, and uh, you, you define uh, all the criteria for that. Um, again, because you are in full control of your data, uh, you know what, uh, what you have there and what you need out of it. You can build your custom apps and uh, AI application, I had to mention it. Um, and basically here you have the dashboard, um, which is um, kind of a repetitive uh, requirement in architecture. Uh, the carbon footprint dashboard where every material, every element has specific carbon footprint and in the end you need to uh, optimize it and once you are changing your model you can have constant insight of how this carbon footprint is changing. Um, you can uh, also use um, our SDK in C Sharp, Python and JavaScript to pull the data, modify the data, analyze the data, uh, build new connectors with new software and again do whatever you need with the data. Uh, you can use the um, REST API and GraphQL to query the data from the server, again, depending on your permissions. Um, and this is a, a new compilation, so the, um, our community team has shared this with me and uh, they call it the wall of love. Uh, it's basically the, um, the um, good things people say about Speckle, uh, mainly in the, our community forum. And the practical reason behind this is that Speckle has grown so big or so wide in functionality that it's doing so many things and sometimes we can't even tell what is the exact benefit for the users that they can out, take out of it. And the thing that uh, keeps coming up is that uh, people are using Speckle as their model data hub. So uh, to store, add, modify and, and use. Um, the speckle.community is a place to not only leave compliments, but usually it's a place to report bugs, ask questions. People are very active there. Some users are helping other users. People are requesting new features, requesting new connectors. Uh, people are also developing their own connectors and come to the forum to say, hey, we have built the new connector. You can try it out. Um, these are other sources. Uh, the first one, app.speckle.system, is the actual platform where you can register, uh, get immediate um, demo with some test model and explore how it works. Uh, speckle.guide is a documentation when nobody reads but they should. Uh, speckle.system uh, tutorials, uh, that's the main website and one of the section is the tutorials. And the last one is community, which I have already mentioned. And uh, I will just uh, show briefly how real people and real companies are using it. So one is was the hackathon project the Speckle organized earlier this year, and we had a team uh, who collaborated across four disciplines, five softwares. Uh, they were from four different companies in five different countries, and they had used geotechnical data, ground investigation data, uh, underground uh, structures uh, to find the optimal path for the underground tunnel uh, and run the feasibility study on it. Uh, we had um, another company who summarized their experience 
uh, as uh, with Speckle as it removes the complexity of advanced workflows and helps them focus on the task rather than on handling the tools themselves. And what they did is they hacked the web viewer uh, instead of allowing it to uh, just view the data, they, allow, they gave the access to the engineers to change the parameters uh, that uh, designers uh, of the model that designers have uploaded and um, run the, um, the sketch of what it will be uh, instead of giving the engineers the source file with BIM data and have a risk of them changing something irreversibly. Uh, another example was a geotechnical engineering project in New Zealand with a lot of seismic activity where uh, there is plenty of iterations of uh, how designers uh, are working with engineers uh, and making simulations and their conclusion was that uh, Speckle allowed them to work um, each person or each professional in their own software that they're most comfortable and not focus on the differences in those softwares. Uh, and the last one is uh, my favorite, it's saving time. Um, and in this case, uh, the company had to run the live monitoring on the construction site and they had uh, people updating the data in a different ways from the Excel sheets through the 3D models to the other reports and they had built a custom dashboard to help them to monitor it and they also take, took advantage of the 3D change tracking with the 3D model uh, in, in the web viewer. And um, again, uh, this is open source. You can always introduce yourself in the community. You can go to the GitHub, you can, you can see the code, you can add your pull requests. And what I will ask you to do, please, everyone, um, to join the community, though this link will lead you directly to the uh, community post saying, please introduce yourself. And uh, you can just write one sentence of who you are and what you do. And uh, what do you do with uh, geospatial data or other types of data? And in this way, we can stay in touch. And if you have interesting case study for us, you can share. If we have interesting case study for you, we also can reach uh, out to you. So yeah, uh, thank you very much. Um. Thank you, Katerina. Any questions? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the the presentation. Um, just the examples and the documentation are really good. And um, I'll let them. Uh, compared to like uh, most open source projects, getting people to do examples and documentation is a a, a real issue. Um, so I'm just wondering how people found time to work and, and make it look so good for the demos? Uh, how people uh, who have reported their case studies had time to make it look good or? So just in, in terms of the documentation and examples that you showed, um, mm -hmm. is that members of the community or is that the? Uh, the documentation uh, regarding the code is mainly us uh, because we are responsible for people <laughs> who read the code and uh, if I find any errors. The tutorials are also written mainly by our team. Uh, the case studies are uh, the companies that we have reached out to share their experience, and uh, yeah, and they found the time to do that. <laughs> so, yep. Um, other questions? Yeah, I think that's all. Uh, thank you, Katerina. So.